Good morning, and welcome to the second Sunday in Easter, St. Mark's online worship service. The bulletin may be found this morning on our website, which also includes a number of uh, events taking place this week and uh, the rest of the month uh, in the life of the community. And just a quick note about the service today. At the end, we'll be having the peace as usual. Um, during the peace, though, we won't be having people, uh, their voices and faces come in at all. It's just going to be a text message as there was some garbling going on last week. So we're going to try that uh, new method this week. So be prepared with your fingertips to send peace to fellow parishioners. And now we will uh, begin with processional hymn number 182. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you 
and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who in the Paschal Mystery established the new covenant of reconciliation, grant that all who have been reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Spirit is speaking. God's people are listening. A reading from the book of Acts. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of power, wonders, and signs that God did through him among you. As you yourself know, this man handed over to you according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God. You crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. But God raised him up, having freed him from death, because it was impossible for him to be held in its power, because it concerned him. I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand, so that I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to Hades or let your Holy One experience corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of gladness for your presence. Fellow Israelites, I may say to you confidently of our ancestor that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Since he was a prophet, he knew that God had sworn with an oath to him 
that he would put one of his descendants on his throne. Foreseeing this, David spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, saying, he was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh experience corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that all of us are witnesses. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord will show me the path of life. Protect me, O God, for I take refuge in you. I have said to the Lord, you are my Lord, my good above all others. All my delight is upon the godly that are in the land, upon those who are noble among the people. But those who run after other gods shall have their troubles multiplied. Their libations of blood I will not offer, nor take the name of their gods upon my lips. O oh Lord, you are my portion and my cup. It is you who uphold my Lord. My boundaries and close a pleasant plan. Indeed, I have a good lead habitation. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. I have set the Lord always before me, because he is at my right hand, I shall not fall. My heart therefore is glad, and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. For you will not abandon me to the grave, nor let your Holy One see the pit. You will show me the path of life, in your presence there is fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. The Lord will show me the path of A reading from the first letter of Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold that, though perishable, is tested by fire, 
may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you not, do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy. For you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. You believe in me, Thomas, because you have seen me. Blessed are they who have not seen and yet believe. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. Lord Christ. Well, good morning, everyone. Happy Easter, because it is still Easter season. This is the second Sunday of Easter. And like the second Sunday of Easter every year, we hear the story of Thomas. And usually I preach a sermon along the lines of why we shouldn't call him Doubting Thomas because he already had a nickname. He was called the twin and he didn't have any doubts that anyone else didn't have. And so to single him out is kind of weird. And I never really liked that. But this is a unique year. This is a unique second Sunday after Easter because we find ourselves in the same place as the disciples. 
picture this. This has been a long, rough few days for the disciples. They had gone to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover. They have a Passover meal and Jesus institutes the Lord's Supper and everything is going well until Jesus starts talking about being betrayed. And then he is betrayed and he's handed over to Pontius Pilate and he's flogged and then he's taken to Golgotha and he is crucified and he's laid in a grave and a stone is rolled over the grave and everything has changed. This man who was a lightning rod for radical change is suddenly gone. This person who seemed larger than life itself is not there anymore. This person they have devoted the past three years of their life to following and emulating is suddenly gone and they are lost. And then on the third day, they get news from some of the women who are among them that the stone has been rolled away from the mouth of the grave and Jesus's body isn't there. And two disciples run and they confirm that Jesus in fact is not in the tomb, but no one knows where he is. And so not even 12 hours later, there the disciples are locked in a room and afraid because the world around them is terrifying. And who knows who's going to be the next person to die because they associated with Jesus. The parallels are obvious. Here we all are having a church service through the computer because who knows what would happen if all of us were to gather together in one place as we have done for so long. Our world has drastically changed. It is not the world we knew even two months ago. What does the future hold in store? What does it mean to be the body of Christ if we cannot gather physically together? What does it mean if we cannot share the Eucharist, one of the core parts of our faith, if we cannot share the body and blood of our Savior with one another and with the world? What does it mean? Who are we if we are not a people who gather together? But like the disciples, there is still hope. Because though they were locked in a room, though they were afraid, Jesus came and was among them. Do not be afraid. Because the truth is that not even death could stop Jesus. And not even a virus, a pandemic, can stop us from being the body of Christ. Jesus is with us even now as we are in our homes, as we are, if we are an essential employee, if we are at our jobs, when we have to venture out into the world, Jesus is with us. And he is telling us not to be afraid because what happened nearly 2000 years ago was an event that changed life forever. 
the world was changed and there is no going back. I don't know when church will start looking and feeling like church again. I don't know when we will all be able to gather back in our building and share the Eucharist with one another, but our world is no longer the same as it was, and it never will be. But that's not a bad thing. Because whatever the future has in store for us, we have Jesus to walk the road with us. We have the love of God to shield us and protect us wherever we go. And we know that not even death can end our story. So today our message is a message of hope in the midst of doubt, uncertainty, fear. We have hope because we know that the resurrection changed our life. The resurrection changed the way we operate in the world. And whatever the future has in store, we have each other. We are connected as the body of Christ. And whenever we make it back to St. Mark's church building, the alleluias will be loud. Whenever we can see each other, whenever we can wrap our arms around each other in a loving embrace, we will hold one another tightly. But until then, we are still connected. We still have one another and we still have God. So as much as things have changed, the things that are important have remained the same. Know that you are loved beyond measure. Know that you are connected to a community that loves you. Know that regardless of distance, you are not alone. Because nothing can come between you and Jesus. Nothing can come between you and the God who created you and loves you. So let this be a season of rejoicing and let our alleluias ring loud and clear. And let's move forward with hope. Whatever the future may bring, that we are one in Christ. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, 
he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name. Let us bring offerings both online and through our lives as we come into his courts. Let us pray. Almighty God, our times are in your hand. We call upon you in this hour of our need, when we are lonely and must stand apart. Be our strength, O sovereign Lord, our calm in the midst of raging seas, our refuge and our dwelling place. Sanctify to us this time drawn away from others, even as your Son, O Father, drew away to a lonely place for prayer. Deepen our need of you, O Lord, that every breath may be a whisper of the Spirit's prompting, a renewed searching of the deep things of God. Stir up in us the great act of intercession that we may spend our time apart in prayer for the world you created and sustained. Bless us in our turning toward you and make us a blessing to those who stand in need of you, the whole fragile earth. All this we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O Lord, arise, help us, and deliver us for thy name's sake. O God, we have heard with our ears, and our ancestors have declared unto us the noble works that you have done in their days and in the old time before them. O Lord, arise, help us, and deliver us for thy name's sake. 
be with all those affected by the health crisis throughout the world, those in the midst of its path, and all those who seek to respond. May you watch over them with your care and make us all vigilant examples of your love and compassion during this current crisis. O oh Lord, arise, help us, and deliver us for thy name's sake. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O Lord, arise, help us, and deliver us for thy name's sake. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.
The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Everyone is invited to greet one another by text at this time. 